Hey guys, so I wanted to show you real quick something that I got in the mail today for my little goaties. super excited to open this package I got in the mail today. It is a natural deworming product. Um, it uses all herbs to deworm your goats and keep the levels low, keep them healthy. So you don't have to use chemical products. Um, so the chemical products you have to use less often. I think it's like once every six months or so. Whereas this, you have to use a little bit more frequently. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I think maybe once a week. I don't know. I'll figure it out and let you guys know for sure. But um, it's super exciting because you don't have to use any chemicals. It's all herbal. Super healthy for your goats and keeps those worm levels down. Okay, so this is so cool. I opened up the package. Um, it's You can see it's from Molly's Herbals Natural Care for Animals. Um, this is the complete herbal worm formula kit. And um, it kind of just tells you what it contains. Here's her information if you guys want to check her out for yourself. I highly suggest you do. Um, so basically there's two formulas and it teach, shows you how to use them, when to use them, how much to use, um, and all that jazz. Um, and then she also gives you this cool little record chart. So you can keep record, make sure you're giving um, enough, not too often, all that stuff. So. Here's my two formulas, and um, we'll open them up in a little bit, and I'll let you kind of see what they look like. Good morning. So it's kind of early in the morning, but I went to bed last night before I got to tell you guys um, the rest of everything I wanted to tell you about this new herbal dewormer that I got for the goats. So I got up early this morning, and I had the husband take the kids to school, and well, my youngest goes to daycare on Fridays, so... Um, he took him to daycare and took my daughter to school and I'm going to tell you guys the rest of what I wanted to tell you guys. So I truly took some time to look over and read the directions and paperwork um, this morning so that I could give you guys an accurate description of what this is and why it works and how to use it. So um, again, this is from Molly's Herbal. Molly's Herbals, Natural Care for Animals. Okay, so it's all herbs, like I said. The um, first formula is wormwood, garlic, fennel, and black walnut. The second formula is garlic, cucurbita. Feel free to laugh at me if I just totally butchered that. Curcubita pepo, mugwort. I feel like I'm in like... Lord of the Rings right now or something reading these off. Fennel, hyssop, and thyme. Those are the herbs that are used in both of these formulas, okay? These work by expelling the worms from the body. The worms actually hate the herbs so much that they'd rather leave the host than stay there with the herbs. If it doesn't kill them first, they will actually decisively leave the goat, which is so cool because they're just like, no, I don't like these herbs. I don't wanna be here. Get me out. It also works by building the animal's immune system, which is really, really neat, guys, because a lot of the chemical and drug products out there for deworming goats, they don't have any immunity building properties. In fact, they probably hurt the goat's immune system. Um, and a lot of times the worms actually can build a resistance to the chemical or the drug that is supposed to push them out. So sometimes they end up not even working anyways if you've used them a lot, if you've had to use them very often, if it's a really, really bad infestation. Sometimes they build a resistance to it and it doesn't work anymore. Um, there is no evidence that the worms have been building a resistance to these herbal remedies. So the people that have been using them have never noticed it, you know, eventually not working anymore. Their goats are always healthy. I've just heard so many good things about these herbal remedies, so I'm really excited to try them. You know, not only does this immune system building that these herbs provide 
it helps goats be able to fight the infection off better by themselves anyways, um, but it also helps them prevent getting worms in the first place because their immune system will be good, it'll be high, they'll be healthy, and worms are less likely to infest a healthy goat. Um, they're more likely to be in sick goats, to be in stressed goats, to be in goats that just gave birth because, you know, they're traumatized and stressed and whatever. Um, anytime an immune system is low for any reason in an animal, that's when worms take advantage. Okay, so we've talked about how um, it gets the worms out, how it builds their immune system, and um, now let's talk about how this is a two-part system. So there is formula number one, which is woodworm combination, or I'm sorry, worm wood, not woodworm. Worm wood, worm combination. Okay, I'll show you that, see that? And then there is formula number two, which is weekly worm formula and tonic. See that? All right, so the dosage for a miniature goat is um, two teaspoons. So these are the dosages for an adult goat. She says she doesn't give her kids an adult dose until they're about two months old. So, you know, just give them less when they're babies and be careful. Maybe give them, like there's, there's dosages on this paper for like dogs, cats, rabbits. So you can kind of go by that and do it for, you know, the size, the baby goat. Is gonna be smaller so they should have less. I'm not gonna go through every single little detail on this paper because if you order this you can read it for yourself. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, easy to understand, but basically formula number one you're supposed to give once a day for three days in a row and then you repeat that every six to eight weeks. The only time you would not do that with this is if you have a pregnant goat. Pregnant goats should not have this because of the wormwood. Um, herbalists just don't recommend people or animals that are pregnant to um, ingest wormwood. If they are pregnant, you would instead do that three days in a row with formula number two, okay? So, three days in a row every six to eight weeks. Formula number two, you give to your goats once a week, okay? In conjunction with formula number one. So you give the formula number one for three days and that week you do not give formula number two. And then for once, once a week for the seven weeks in between, you give formula number two. Then you do the three days again with formula number one. So if your goat is pregnant, do three days in a row of formula number two and then do it once a week. Formula number two is perfectly safe while your goat is pregnant, while your goat is lactating, all that jazz. Um, but right after your goat gives birth, do the three days of formula number one, like right after, because they really need it right after they give birth, okay? And um, the only thing is because wormwood is not recommended for um, pregnant or lactating women, when you milk your goat, it's fine for the babies, okay? It's fine for the babies to drink the milk with this. But if you are milking your goat and saving the milk, the only thing she recommends, she says it's perfectly okay for adults to drink um, or adolescent kids, but a very young child, like six months or younger, you may want to not give them the milk right after you've given that formula number one. Give them milk that has only been, you know, after the three days of doing this, when they're only on formula number two. Okay, it's not, there probably isn't an issue with it, but it's one of those things that you'd just rather be safe than sorry, all right? So basically, you know, this is just ground up herbs. You can shake it, it's like a powdered formula. Um, how to administer it to them. You can either just sprinkle it on top of their food, but some goats are gonna be finicky with that or other animals, whatever animal you're using this for. So she does have cool little websites here you can go to to look up recipes for little like dosage balls she makes. Um, she makes like slippery elm dosage balls for her kids, her kid goats, <laughs> let's be clear on that. And she makes peanut butter dosage balls for her dogs. Um, so there's, there's a couple options you can do if your goat is finicky about eating it just 
powdered on top of your food, of their food, sorry. If either of those still aren't working, you can always drench them, just use a syringe, mix it with water and put it in their mouth and make them drink it, okay? <laughs> there is options if your goat is like, you know, takes one whiff of it and decides they don't wanna eat that on top of their food. I would, I'm gonna try just mixing it in their grain first because they chow down that grain like nothing else. I don't think, I don't think that they will be finicky about it, but you never know. So that's how I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna to start today because I got my goats about, let's see, I got them in the beginning of October and it's November 1st. So I've had them about a month um, and both the places I got them from did say that they had been warmed already, but I don't know, I checked their eyelids yesterday, which is a trick you can do to see the coloring of like, you know, the inside of their eyelid. If it's like a dark pink to red, then they're good. That means that they don't have very many worms. Um, you don't need to treat them. Now, this is more of a test for the chemical treatments. The herbs you should treat no matter what, because it's a preventative. They're healthy to give all the time. You're not putting you're not putting chemicals in your goats every six to eight weeks. They're natural herbs. So no matter what your goat's eyelids look like, do the herbs. What I'm trying to say is I think I need to start this now with my goats because I checked their eyelids yesterday and they're kind of like a medium pink. It wasn't dark pink, but it wasn't quite pale pink. It's kind of right in between. And when it's pale pink, it's kind of urgent. It's kind of like get your goats a dewormer quickly. And when it's like white or almost white, it is like extremely urgent. Like your goat is probably dying. Okay. So seems they're kind of right in the middle. They definitely need to be wormed. So I'm going to go ahead and give that to them today and see how they do. And I'll let you guys know how the experiment goes. Deworm in the goats day. Hooray. <laughs> shall we holy crap it's chilly out today guys winter is coming oh man this will be my first winter owning goats the true test to whether i can survive here we go you hear them in there they're yelling at me they're like um where's our breakfast it's daylight and you haven't come out yet Gives her food. Okay, here it comes. All right, ready? All right, you both share now because you both gotta get this stuff. I'm gonna kind of mix it up. Hopefully they'll eat it because it's kind of like I maybe should have poured it in there first and then sprinkled it on top because I don't know if they're gonna like lick it off the bottom hi pepper she's like what is this stuff in my food mom i don't think she's a fan hello hi no oh, peach she just steals everything You gotta eat it, Pepper. I might have to get a syringe and drench it just because I didn't think about the fact that it, I mean, I could try pouring it on top tomorrow, but I didn't think about the fact that when you mix it up like that, it's gonna pour, all go down to the bottom and who knows if they're gonna really lick it off. But I guess we'll see. Oh, here's another sign that your goats might need worming, guys. 
Let's look at this for a minute. It's kind of gross, but we're goat people. Okay, see how the poops are kind of like clumped together here? Do you see that? Now I know for a fact that that's peaches doing that because I've seen it happen. <laughs> so sometimes that can be another sign that your goats need to be wormed. Um, so just thought I'd throw that in there. But you guys are not very happy about that stuff, are you? She just sneezed. <laughs> Keep eating it, girls. Pepper especially is not thrilled. They are eating it though. They're just not quite as excited over it as they usually are. Plus I think they're smelling it <laughs> and it's making them sneeze. I figured I'd show you guys while I'm here too. Do you see this right here? I can't see it very well. I don't think she's gonna really let me show you, but. So right there, she had an abscess. I noticed it a few weeks ago and then I had vets come out and take a look at it because even though, you know, the owners told me that they you know, were from a clean herd and the family was tested and everything, they were babies. So they had never been tested for, you know, CAE and CL and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to have a vet come out and take a look at it just in case, but it was right where she had gotten her CAE shot. So I was pretty sure that it was just a abscess from the vaccination site. And luckily the vets pretty much confirmed that for me. Um, you know, they took out some of the liquid and the pus, it was pure white. It wasn't green at all, which would indicate possible CL. It wasn't in a lymph node spot, which CL presents itself in the lymph nodes. And that's where the abscesses usually um, form. So they assured me it was not CL and it was just an abscess from where she had the CAE shot. And um, it has gone down considerably since then. It's just a tiny little bump now. Um, but I just wanted to show that to you guys because abscesses are, you shouldn't really overlook them. You should have them looked at unless, you know, like if you gave a shot and like two days later an abscess forms in that exact spot, then you can be pretty dang sure that's what it is. But, um, they definitely can be very infectious, dangerous, and can spread through your herd very quickly, especially if it is CL. So it's always a good idea to get them checked out just to be on the safe side. So that's what was going on with Pepper. And she's all good, so that's good. So guys, I wanted to show you, well, hi, hello. They do do a pretty good job at eating that all down. There's only a tiny bit. <laughs> Hi, Pepper, get out of there, you silly goat. There is like a tiny bit left stuck to the bottom, but not a lot. I mean, I would definitely say they eat the majority of that dewormer. Now, of course, when I have more than two goats someday, and look, they're licking it right now. They're licking it off the bottom, so that's good. Um, like I said, when I have more than two goats someday, I will um, probably have to give it to them differently so that I know they're all getting a decent amount of it. But yeah, it, that does work. If you only have a few goats, I'd say that that method, as long as your goat's not too picky, works okay. Um, and somebody has been pooping in the baking soda. So, who did that? Who pooped in it? I guess I'm gonna have to get you guys some new baking soda, huh? Yep. Oh, hi. You're not supposed to be claiming on me, a little pickle. All right, well, I don't know if they're gonna come out because it's raining, but I love you girls. Good job eating your dewormer. Good job. Good goaties. This crazy goat just jumped up here by stepping in the, that bucket and then jumping up here. Look, she's got baking soda all over her feet. You little sticker, what are you doing? You two are being naughty. I still love you. I still love you. Of course. 